Hey everyone, in this audio clip, Greg from the Higher Side Chats is talking with us about missing 411, Antarctica UFOs, and how we all feel about Trump. If you want the full episode, look in the video description. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later. So I got two follow-ups from last week. There's the one guy that was found dead by his campsite, and another guy that went missing in downtown Pittsburgh. Here's a news uh, follow-up from... Uh, the local news about the guy that went missing in downtown. I can play that right now. If it will let me. Yep. New developments today in the search for missing Duquesne graduate student Dakota James. Sources tell Channel 11 a possible hit from a cadaver dog led them to a spot on the Allegheny River. WPXI was live on Facebook when at least one diver went into the water. Channel 11's Renee Kaminsky is live with new information she got just this afternoon. Renee? Peggy, I'm told the very last time Dakota James was seen anywhere on video was down here near the Clemente Bridge. His image was picked up from uh, from a camera perched on one of these buildings here. Now, yesterday, a police dog picked up a scent in the river here. That search turned up nothing, but overnight new equipment was brought in, and we were here when divers went back in today. Channel 11 was there. So you got the gist of that. They it's found following. him in the water. Uh, no, the body has not been found, oh. but the dogs, uh, unlike in a lot of cases, the dogs don't take scent. This actually reminds me of one of the Crater Lake cases I read in the uh, Missing Forum One Western United States, mm-hmm. when the dog, when it was about the guy who took his kid out playing by these uh, dunes around Crater Lake, and his kid went around one of the hills and he never saw him again. I think it was like a three-year-old kid. And then when they brought the search dogs in, the dogs got his scent and they went right to the shore in the water. So, and then this also follows in, like, in uh, Plytus' book, like, was it a sobering coincidence? He talks about the young guys getting, uh, um, well, uh, disappearing in cities, where, mm-hmm. I mean, it, I think we have more, this one is painting out better than the other one, which I can follow up on, where the dogs get his, uh, sent right to the river. And I, I don't, from what I see in the one security camera video, he doesn't look like he's super, like, wasted or anything, and he fell in the river. And the Clemente Bridge is, it's right going past from downtown to PNC Park where the Pirates play. It's not, it's well lit. I mean, I, I could, uh, maybe someone mugged him and somehow threw him over the bridge and he didn't swim the shore. I mean, the water would have been cold, but like we talked about before, it's like, you make it to shore, you die. In this case, I mean, it's not that far to shore, so it's uh, all paying out to be kind of like one of these disappearances that we saw in the uh, Politis, uh, at least from one of his books, well, a few of them. And uh, Greg, you talked you talk to uh, David. Did he say anything off the record to you that you would care to share with us or have any idea what's going on? Nah, I wish I could say he did, but he, he's pretty coy when it comes to what he thinks might be the conclusion. And that's fine because there's plenty of people out in the world that will speculate for him, do plenty of that. I would. But it's the da- it's so imp- it's so impressive that he has the data that can't be ignored. People are going missing. Do we know why? We don't. We don't know exactly what it is. Although the people who they're found, mostly kids who did see some kind of living thing with them, it's usually something that looks more like a Bigfoot or a dog man. I've never heard a case where somebody says, oh, yeah, I hung out with a guy in his cabin, and then that guy brought me back here. It's always like a girl being like, oh, the dog man kept me fed and warm. And it's like, what the fuck is she talking about? One guy oh, yeah. or one kid saw his dead grandmother. That's the closest thing to a human. But some weird is going on. And uh, there's, a, there's a guy, Richard Sauter, who looks at underground bases. And then uh, my buddy Olaf Phillips, he took the missing bases and he overlaid it with the clusters from David Politis, and it's pretty yes. close. I mean, there's definitely a case to be made that they're being taken underground to these bases. They're, they could be abducted. This could be something that has to do with Bigfoot or interdimensional creatures of some kind, or it could have to do with Pizzagate. There's a lot of possibilities, but the facts don't lie that people are going fucking missing. And the organ harvesting. We talked about that on one of the last shows. Got an organ harvest. I yeah. will. I have two theories of what possibly might be going on. One is that we made a deal with some kind of entity that they can yeah. take people from certain areas. The Eisenhower deal. Something like that. And yeah. so we have. So these entities have ground uh, grunts, which are dogmen or Bigfoot, that scout the ground, look for good candidates, and they are taken back to the mothership, let's say, 
And then at that point, they're evaluated whether or not they're going to be taken and never found again or destroyed and returned back to some place where a human might find them. Um, usually a body of water. Yeah, usually a body of water. And, and at some point, these entities say, thank you for this deal. We are going to renegotiate. We need more. And so, Yeah, here's the transistor for you, humans. So, yeah, we need more. Is there any possible way you can get us more humans? Uh, that would be where Pizzagate and human smuggling might come in, where we're just channeling people who would never be missed and, and into the funnels of some kind of entity that want to use them for God knows what. And you cover it up with occultism and ridiculousness of, oh, I can't believe you think that rich people would do this. Well, yeah, if they had access to really awesome technology, people would do some pretty insane shit to live forever. It's not that True. ridiculous. The problem is, like, there's no clear-cut proof of that. Um, there are witness testimonies of people seeing very weird creatures. There's also test. There's also some pretty weird findings of of these people being found without shoes, but socks on, and their socks are not dirty. That means that they, they were either either carried or they were somehow levitated and moved. But their socks were right. not dirty, which is a very and interesting they're always. Thing. They're always in some like barely conscious state too. Like they're they're in they're the fetal alive, position yeah. next to the road or something when they are found, and they don't remember much, or they're too young to even talk about it, or maybe it's very traumatic. But I think in those cases, I don't know that the elite have anything to do with it. I think there might be something interdimensional going on that's just beyond the scope of human knowledge right now. Potentially, oh, I, might, I mean, some I, people think that's a scarier thought than the elite know everything. The idea that even the elite, the elite don't know what the fuck's going on. I think the uh, the elite, if they try to supplement with with whatever their deal is, you know, it's kind of like the elite are like Negan from The Walking Dead. You, they always want more and more and more and more, and so mm -hmm. the elite got to do whatever they got to do to pay the piper. And if it's child smuggling, great, you know, go ahead and use a national parks as you want. We'll cover it up, but we don't keep databases and. As long as you keep giving us technology and consulting fees, you know, for this technology, we'll we'll abide by whatever agreement that you want to give us. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, could be, or it just could be. It, it could be it, Joe. It could be. It could be a genie. Gin. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a gin. I I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's wide Probably open. Not that. Probably not that. I like all these other theories. The underground basis thing, I think, Mike, didn't you do even do an overlay? Or something? We talked about this it was, in the past. I did an overlay. I love that. It was an overlay of military entrance bases that I overlaid in a... There was a, there was a, a nice little cluster where each were each military entrance base or processing base where new recruits would come in and do whatever, where they process people. They, there's nice little clusters around those bases, but there's so many damn military bases, it's hard to make a correlation. Hmm. But I like the underground the uh, the underground base theory. I mean, oh yeah, it's a very we're still very just scene. waiting to see how big the junk is on any of these interdimensional creatures. That's really what our primary focus is. We're let's curious that, about a lot of those things. Dicks. <laughs> yes, let's whip them out. Let's see what you're working with <laughs> you over got here. Put that on your soundboard. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! Give it anal sex. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Make it happen, guys! Come on. <laughs> let's let's transition over to a little distraction. Yes. Distractions. So we talked about the distraction that the elite might do to cover up whatever crimes they have. What about what distraction might they create or use to undermine whatever Trump might be trying to do to undermine globalism? And well, you got, sorry, a, you go got a theory on. on this? Go ahead, Greg. Uh, I didn't expect an and, but, so I'm sorry to interrupt you, but <laughs> David Seaman actually tweeted about this saying that Antarctica, that there's going to be some kind of thing in Antarctica that they have ready and they're going to release it like when they need to. If the shit gets pretty serious, you know, if the shit's about to hit the fan with Pizzagate perhaps, or, you know, if Trump's doing something that they want to reel back, maybe they want to get back in the TPP, who knows, but... Uh, the idea is that something's going on in Antarctica, and he says that whatever they tell us about is going to be fake. But I think maybe 
it's still real because I don't understand why Buzz Aldrin and, and Senator Kerry and these people would be going down there. I mean, there's a long list of people going to Antarctica, and I don't think it's to create a false story, but it might be to release something very impressive. Maybe they found a Gobekli Tepe type structure in the ice somewhere, but you release that when you need to, and that'll distract everybody. Well, the crazier thing there is, no, John Kerry's Secretary of State when he was, went there, and not just a senator, I believe. Oh, so yeah, that, that, John Kerry. That, that was more government. important. I get we're sending our Secretary of State to Antarctica. Why? Right. Well, right. we said Buzz and, Aldrin would be the last living guy who maybe have seen something like this that's there. Maybe they found an obelisk. You know, the same obelisk the moon, that they yeah. supposedly found on the moon. I. I totally agree with Greg, and that's what I was leading into, David Seaman's uh, theory. I think that's actually somewhat legitimate. If you really want to distract everybody from what Trump is doing or even undermine him in what he would do, we would have to throw a lot of money down there to start you know, excavating and, and doing whatever and bringing the international community together by force because of overwhelming attention. Whereas people are viewing Trump as an isolationist and pulling out of a lot of agreements, this might force him to get back into the international arena, uh, kicking and screaming. Yeah. So, so let uh, me ask, are you guys Trump fans? Um, Jeff, it seems like you might be. Well, we, 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 were, we were sort of like any, anybody but a Hillary kind of people. And, that's, and that's me. Not, yeah, I would be an anybody but Hillary person. I, I want Trump to be... I want him to drain the swamp and do what he says. The Jeff Sessions was just confirmed today. And a lot of the Pizzagate people think that he's going to be the key to running the Justice Department and getting, you know, convictions or at least busting some of the people who are are, are involved in this if it's actually going on. Um, I just I, I kind of feel like we're screwed either way. I mean, I have a guy who I was working with who said he has family in the intelligence community, CIA. And he said that uh, one time they were talking about politics at dinner, and he said it doesn't really matter who's president because what's happening in the deep state, if they want a war, they're going to get their war. They're just going to have to find a way to make it happen. So I don't think, it's you know, happen. I want yeah, and I want Trump to do well, and I want Pizzagate to get exposed. And I want 9-11 right. to come out. But I just, I, you know, I, I don't think I can say I'm a, a full-fledged supporter personally, but I think right. Jeff is. Yeah, I mean, we should want the best, of course, and this is kind of a wild card, so we should hope that it it turns out to be good, but I just think there's a tendency to always hope this new president's going to do something, and then it slowly just doesn't happen, and all that air kind of fizzles out, and uh, I'm just, I don't know, I'm Jeff, skeptical, Jeff, skeptical yeah. of anyone who can be elected president. I mean, they narrow it down to people who are going to, I mean— that they they can control, I think, or I mean, they wouldn't be there. And I just don't think there's a narrative that Trump disrupted the system and and somehow got in there. But I'm like, I don't trust the integrity of voting machines. I just think that uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm hopeful. I would love it to be great, but I can't say either way. I have no inside knowledge. But if you're elected president, I'm pretty sure you're on somebody's team, even if it's a different one than the previous president. I was a Sanders slash Trump person. I wanted either or because <laughs> so they wild. So they would disrupt the system because they're so out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, yeah. I think Trump is he he just rode the roller coaster. I I I thought he would get per get in the office, but he's ill prepared. This is why I, I don't know if I'm a fan of Trump, but this is what I like. He gets so butt hurt by everything. He tweets something. And then the media gets butt hurt by his butt hurt response. That the media responds to his butt hurtness, and it's a continual cycle of <laughs> trolling and butt hurtness. And nothing, nothing's really going to get done. There's really going to be no objective communication or real analysis. It's going to be Trump versus the press for almost four years, or until they impeach him for something. Um, mm-hmm. But what I do like when you have the entire media establishment and almost the entire intelligence community against a candidate. There's got to be something there, and there's got to be a reason they're against him for some reason. And everyone was against him. I think he's a different power network, but I still think that he's he's just a a horse backed by someone else. Maybe uh, that Nazi resurgence. Possibly. I don't know. Mm. I I think he was ill-equipped to appoint people to a cabinet that were, were really not in the swamp, so he was forced to do it. He didn't know what he was doing. Um I think he was just forced to take recommendations to do certain things. Um, I, I don't or, think... Or uh, 
I think maybe the swamp was a lot bigger than he thought it was. Like, <laughs> Possibly, was yes. like fucking what's his name as uh, Rick Perry is he Secretary of Energy? Yeah, come uh, on, I, that guy's yeah, a fucking he tool. Some He's an pretty idiot. Terrible picks there. I mean, all uh, these picks are ho- are for the most part people from government. I mean, uh, there's yeah. there's 300 million people to choose from, and they're all these same fucks. I just I just think that's kind of the the indication that. I mean, things maybe flip the the coin. We flip to the other side of the coin, but it's the same shit, really. I'm sorry, and and if you remember when George Bush was campaigning in 2000, um, Junior, he was saying, you know, well, we need uh, to stop nation building, and he said all the right things that would, you know, dog whistle the Republicans. And ultimately, he did exactly the opposite of everything he said he was going to do. So I mean, there's a big part of me that thinks that I, I, I hope Trump doesn't, but he very well likely could do exactly the same thing as Bush. Maybe he got the, the talking to by everyone and say, look, if you don't do what we say, we're going to kill you and your family. Yes, the Bill Hicks uh, it's angle It's so easy to JFK. kill one man. Yeah. So easy. Uh, you know, I don't think the elite would like sit there and just be like, oh, shit, he's got us. If he's really on another side, uh, we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to give him a chance for one year. And and then after that, I'll start calling him really mean names. That'll show up. <laughs> I'll call him a racist. Yes. Because no one's doing <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, that'll be original. I'll never see it coming.